Hi folks, welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be comparing Winsor & Newton's Cotman watercolour paints with their professional set of watercolour paints, both in pans. I'm going to start by showing you both palettes, starting off with a Cotman set of 24 half pans, and then I'll do the same for the professional set, which also holds 24 half pans. I'll swatch out the colours to show you how they lay down, and talk a bit about the colours in each set, the pigments used, and what I like or dislike about each of them. I'll finish off by doing a quick speed paint of an owl, using the Cotman set to paint one half of the owl and the professional set to paint the other, to let you make your own mind up as to whether it's worth spending the extra money on the more expensive professional watercolours. And speaking of money, currently on Jackson's website the Cotman set of 24 half pans is available for £29.50, whilst the 24 set of professional half pans will set you back £54.95 and that's on offer at the moment. Obviously, if you've seen my latest art supplies haul video, you'll know that I bought the professional set you'll see me using today on eBay for £49, which included delivery. If you want to go and check that video out, I'll put a link in the card above. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon as well if you want to be notified each time I upload a new video. I'm also going to be using my new Canson XL Mixed Media Pad for the speed paint, and this is another supply mentioned in my latest art haul video, so it'll be nice to see how that holds up against watercolour. But all the supplies will be listed in the description box if you want to go and check them out. So let's look firstly at my Cotman palette, which despite being plastic is quite a sturdy design, and opens up to reveal several mixing areas which you can configure how you like. Professional paints come in a black metal tin, which opens out to reveal two main mixing areas with a potential third underneath if you want to lift the paint tray out, and this is nice if you don't want your tin getting in the way of your paper or your workspace. So let's do some colour swatching. I've got the Cotman set on my left and the Professional set to my right, and have not pre-wet either of my palettes. Now although both sets contain 24 half pans, not all the colours are the same, but as far as possible I'm going to try and paint like for like, and we'll talk about the colour selection in a bit. So straight away on the Cotman side I realised that I probably should have pre-wet the pans, as it took a bit of work to activate the colours. I was also working wet on dry, which means I didn't pre-wet the paper either, purely because I wanted to show the colour pigments at their strongest. Once we got going though, the Cotman paints laid down well. On the other side I did notice that the professional paints activated much more easily and laid down really smoothly. The Cotman pans are I think available in 40 different colours and are described by Winsor & Newton as quality transparent watercolours at economical prices and despite Winsor & Newton being based here in the UK, the Cotman range are actually, or at least were, made in China. So on the other side the professional paints are made in France but from what I found, the 24 set is the largest range of pans available. So as we go through the colour swatches, you can see that both ranges are really bright and luminous, but I thought that the professional range did have the edge, as you would hope. The professional colours seemed more highly pigmented, and a little seemed to go a long way. This was more evident with some colours compared with others, but you can see it most clearly with the red, purple and indigo. However, moving on to the browns, and I have to say that in my opinion, the range of browns in the Cotman set seemed better than the professional set, which is both surprising and disappointing. Both sets had five browns in each, but whereas we have a nice rich Indian red in the Cotman set, this is replaced by raw sienna in the professional set, which doesn't look much different than the yellow ochre, despite having different pigments in them. However, I did prefer the Payne's Grey in the professional set, which seemed a lot darker and richer than the Cotman version, and is actually classified as a semi-opaque watercolour. I'll talk about the colour properties more in a bit, but before I finished with the swatches, I thought I'd do a quick colour mix comparison side by side, so you can see them together. To be fair, I think both sets blended really nicely on the paper without any streakiness, but again, I thought the professional paints appeared more vibrant. Thank you. 
Now lastly I tested out the white in both sets which is a Chinese white. I don't really use white watercolour in a pan as they are usually a bit rubbish but you can add white to your colours to soften shades or add some nice effects in say clouds for example. They are only semi opaque and don't layer well over darker colours and for this sort of effect I would usually stick to my white gouache which is an opaque watercolour. So here are the swatches close up, let me know in the comments if you've used one or the other or both of these and your thoughts on them. Right now onto the quick speed paint of the owl and I'll be painting first the left side with the Cotman paints and then secondly the right side with the professional paints. I apologise for the poor lighting at the start here, it was a really grey day that came over really black and it started raining hard just as I began painting. It does lighten up again though so please bear with me. So Winsor & Newton describe these Cotman paints as having a high level of performance with good transparency and excellent tinting strength and I think this is pretty accurate. Most of the colours have a performance rating of A and a few of them have the higher rating of AA which is extremely permanent such as the yellow ochre, the Indian red, burnt sienna, black and white. So far as pigments are concerned, 7 out of the 24 pans are hues, so they are single pigments that are the same hue or colour as the name, but the manufacturer has substituted in a different pigment. This substitute pigment may be used as it's cheaper, which helps to keep the costs down. So hue colours can be acceptable colour substitutes for the original pigments, but they may not be as good quality, and this means they are often less permanent or light fast. Expensive pigments could include cobalt blue, cadmium yellow and cadmium red. So in the Cotman set, each of these colours are replaced with cheaper pigments and are labelled cobalt blue hue, cadmium yellow hue and so on. That said, I didn't have too many issues when painting this side of the owl's face. I like the choice of colours in this set, they mix nicely and layered well. One thing I did feel though was that I needed to add quite a few layers to build up the value of colour I wanted and this side of the painting took a lot longer than the right side. The downside of adding loads of layers with these paints is that you increase the risk of getting a chalky look or finish to your final piece. More student grade paints tend to have less pigment and more fillers which can be more apparent the more layers you add. And there is also the paper to consider and this Canson mixed media paper is fine for use as a sketchbook but isn't particularly good quality paper compared with say those made of cotton and I believe your paper can make a huge difference to your painting. But for doing test paintings like this the Canson XL mixed media pad is a good size and good value for money and surprisingly didn't buckle too much with the addition of water. One thing I did struggle with is removing the washi tape at the end which I don't normally have a problem with, but for some reason when trying to peel it off it did tear the surface of the paper. So next time I'll have to remember to hair dry it first to loosen the glue on the tape. All in all though, I think that it turned out okay. If I wasn't doing a paint comparison, I would have added white gouache to some of the feathers and spent a bit more time on the feather details. But I didn't want to fuss about too much since today the main focus is on comparing the paints. Perhaps the owl was the tricky choice for the comparison, but I wanted to choose a fairly symmetrical reference picture to work from, so the comparison could be seen fairly. So moving on to the professional paints, and I tried to use the same method and techniques for painting as I had done for the Cotman paints, to again make the comparison fair. So Winsor & Newton state in the leaflet that came with these professional paints, that they offer unrivalled brilliance, transparency and performance. They say that they use the finest pigments with the greatest possible performance and add that there are 96 colours available in a variety of sizes, in tubes and pans. So 96 colours across the range, but as I said at the start I could only find 24 sets available in the pans. There are no hues in this set and out of the 24 colours, 14 are rated as A for performance whilst the remaining 10 are rated as AA which is having excellent performance. I did feel that the pigments were more concentrated in this set compared with the Cotman's, which meant I needed less layers to get the values I wanted, which meant I used less paint, and this process was a lot quicker on this side. I also noticed that when you add water to the pans, the colours activate really quickly and turn almost creamy in comparison to the Cotman pans, which stay quite firm. I did read that the pans have a slightly different formula to the professional paint in tubes, having more gelatin in them, 
which might explain why when dry the pans have a sheen to them, but in any case I did feel like they were a higher quality paint than the Cotman and for the most part the colours were very saturated, as you might expect with non-hue colours. That said, I still have a bit of an issue with the choice of browns and struggled somewhat with this owl painting and felt like there was a bit of a gap in this area, but that's not to say you can't mix a darker brown yourself with blue and orange and change the hue by adding other colours to that, but generally I thought the earthy colours provided in this set were pretty weak. That's just my opinion though and perhaps with a bit more time getting familiar with them, playing around and experimenting with colour mixing and so on, it will become less of an issue. I did really enjoy these more creamy paints though and felt that they mixed really smoothly both on and off the paper. As with the left hand side of the owl I really wanted to add some texture with a fan brush or add some white gouache to make the owl's feathers look more realistic, but maybe that's a painting for another day. Looking at the two sides together, I'm not sure you could tell that one has been done with cheaper paints and the other has been done with professional paints, but I would say that I think it was harder work to get the cheaper Cotman paints to look as vibrant as the professional ones. Whether that warrants paying double the price for the professional ones is personal choice, and ultimately it depends what you want to do with the paintings once you finish them. The Cotman set I will continue to use in my sketches because it doesn't matter if they don't have the best performance ratings. If I was doing an original piece of artwork to sell, or as a commission, I'd probably use the professional set. So that's my conclusion for today, I'm sorry if I've talked too much and for my croaky throat which is still here, but I wanted to provide as much information as possible for those of you out there who have considered buying either of these sets, so I hope you found it useful. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good week, bye!